yes go ahead book now with any of my services whether you book 15 30 or an hour the cheapest option per minute is always going to be the longer session you book so for example 15 minute is what like let's say 49 dollar right 30 minute which is double that time is you would think it would be 96 it's actually I believe around $84, like it's actually cheaper per minute the longer you book, so an hour is going to be about, you know, even cheaper per minute, so I always say book the longer one, you get your money's worth, and you get a detailed session, you know, rather than paying once for $15, it would end up being more expensive for you, but I understand people's limits and stuff. But, um, yes, I just wanted to make that very clear. That's why the pricing is arranged the way it is. Um, so that it's cheaper for you the longer you book, you know. All right. So, yes, 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 I'm excited to offer an hour. I've always technically been doing an hour. Like, people, basically what they do is they rig the system, right? They book an hour ASMR custom video, and then they request a tarot reading. It works. It works. I do it. I do do it. I've done quite a few, but um, I do notice that every tarot reader offers an hour long service. Like, I feel like I'm the only one that doesn't. I only offer 15, 30, and that was because of time restraints. And um, But now I'm ready. I'm ready. I feel like I need to advance in my tarot reading even further. And let's see how it goes. You know, I, I, I personally enjoy the hour sessions, you know, I really do. Um, so I'm like, why not, you know, because 15 minute anything feels so rushed, you know, even like the Reiki healing, like I can barely get much done, you know, so that's why I always recommend the longer services. All right, so let's get that out the way. Today's video is going to be really interesting. Um, I went to this event recently um and there was like a group gathering it's like a rejuvenate your soul type of event hosted by alba wyman who does hypnotherapy sessions past life regressions and um i got a past life regression back in 2019 you could see it on our youtube channel just type on youtube search black hole and the sun alba wyman you'll find it um and you can watch my whole session there. It was really interesting, and you'll get to know me more, and, you know, more of my soul history, I suppose. Um, and then, after that, I studied, I went through the whole program of hypnotherapy to become a transpersonal hypnotherapist, so I did all 700 plus hours, or however, no, it was like 500 plus hours, however much it was. And then, um, I kind of took a break from it for a while, you know, what really got me into that stuff was Dolores Cannon, so... And then, um, I went to this event, right, after all these years, so it just kind of drew me in, so I went to Micanopy over the weekend, came back, and, uh, during the event, we looked into our past life. I fell asleep a few times, so I didn't really see much, and I've done so many past life works, even on my own, that, like, I've pretty much seen everything I need to know, or that just means I've seen all my past lives, like, I, I don't think... I know it were infinite souls and there's so much, but like, I really don't think there is that much else. It's not that deep, right? Um, and I've kind of discovered I'm like one of those like, um, new beginner souls. Like I'm still a baby basically. Like I haven't been, I have, this is my first time on earth, you know, like all that stuff. So like, I, it, it's weird though, cause the timeline's different cause that's me on one timeline another timeline i'm more obviously ancient old advanced and i'm more drawn and linked to that because um that's how i've always felt so, so it, it's kind of like existing at the same time so don't freak out if you hear this now future regression that we did and i'm going to talk about like seeing myself in the future technically it's in the now right but i didn't feel that way in the session to in the session it felt like this person was telling me that this is going to be me in the future, in this timeline, in this, like, as this fractal of my soul body, right? I know that can be confusing, but hear me out. So basically, Abba 
assisted us all. We put on our silent sound headphones, which were really cool, so uh, we could hear her talk, and then we were brought into a regressive state, hypnotic deep state, and then, you know how they do the countdown, all that, you know, you're taken up an elevator or downhill, or rather up a stairs, downstairs, whatever it was, I don't remember, because I was so deep at this point, you know, and then you're brought into that doorway that takes you to your future life. So you're brought basically in an elevator that I, I entered the codes 2050 because I wanted to see what 2050 would look like for me, right? And I set the intention that this would be me, right? Like it's not happening now at the same time. It's me in the future. Y'all, let me tell you, I don't think, I, I always knew I wouldn't be around long anyway. That's besides the point. Don't freak out by me saying that. I just always knew, okay? Ever since I was young, I was like, I ain't gonna be around here long, okay? It ain't gonna be long. <laughs> Let me tell you. I was definitely not me. I was a woman named Layla. Layla. L-A-I-L-A, -L -A, something like that. Like, I wanted to say Layla at first, but I'm like, that sounds freakishly like Star Wars. I think uh, I've never even seen Star Wars, to be honest, but... I heard of a Layla in Star Wars, so I'm like, okay. It, it felt more like Layla, though. Like, it, it, like when I s heard it, it was like my name being called. It was Layla. So I walk out that elevator, and I look like Catwoman. I look like I'm wearing, like, a tight latex material, but it wasn't latex. It was, like, a futuristic outfit. And I'm in this building, and I'm, I'm walking like this. In these, like, heel-looking boots, I don't know, and I'm looking bad as, like, so I'm a 49-year-old woman, okay, and I have a job, all right, so I have some notes here that I wrote, so I'm gonna kind of be going back and forth, but yeah, like a latex-like clothing, but not really, it kind of had, like, a sharp cut out here, like, a, like, a, almost like a, a W, and then it, like, went over here, but it was, like, part of, almost looked like it was part of my skin, because it was so tight. And I did see that in other, like, self-hypnosis, future events, like people's clothing, like, 2070 and onwards would be like this, you know how this kind of looks futuristic, but like, uh, like, almost attached to your skin, like, so tight, and it's gonna, like, cool you from the heat outside or something, or the humidity, like, it's like your clothes are gonna be your air conditioning. <sighs> anyway. So this was the year 2015, so this long hallway, like super clean, super narrow, it kind of looks like hallways that you would see in a, like a super cool building in Dubai or something like that, but like, it had that weird vibe to it, 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 it I didn't like the world, I looked outside the window and the landscape looked like really desolate, brown and yellow, almost like you were in Venus, but a little more earth-like, a little, just a tad, um, and I'm like, oh my god, there's like no life outside, it's like we, and then I, like, you know, in the session, you get imprinted immediately, like, oh, we live in buildings, we don't go outside, you just don't do that, you just don't go outside ever, and I was like, like, is this the future, you know, but I'll get to that, um, I don't remember if it was it, no, it was a different planet. Yes, it was not Earth, thankfully. It was a different planet. So that means my soul probably, when it's time, will go to another planet. Thank God, because I don't want to be here. But, you know, at the same time, I'm looking at the planet. I'm like, oh, I don't work. After that life, I really don't want to be there either. So I'm like, we need to change the timelines. So I basically, there's this pod train system. It's basically called like a pod train system. And there are like pods that take you and accelerate you to other locations and destinations, right? And like you kind of just use your mind to make it go. You don't really need to like push a button. You, it, you just know and it goes. It knows where, what you know and it goes based on what you want. So, um, so I worked there. <laughs> I worked there to help, you know, design, build, something like that, construct it, like architect the model, like make sure it's function. It was more like a... Not architect, but it was more like 
I'm recalling some of it now as I'm just like sitting here reflecting on it, honestly. Um, it was more like, um, making sure it's functioning properly, right? Like I'm responsible for the, the mechanics, the dynamics, like, um, why is this person's pod going, moving too slowly? Oh, maybe because the electricity is, or it was more like energy rather than electricity, but anyway, so it's something we can't understand, which is why a lot of it, I couldn't, it went so fast too. Um, because we have kept having to go move from scene to scene, so yeah, I found it really interesting. But yeah, I was responsible in making sure like the gears are flowing smoothly, right? Um, the whole operation, it was more communicating with others, and then I say something, and then they do it, something to make the train pod system work better. Like I, I had to go back and forth, go around and make sure everything was in order. You know, everything was, you know. So I was a, another worker of many, and I, I, I just, I wasn't like a higher up or anything, you know, but I felt higher up because I looked so bad. <laughs> Sorry. So, um, and then I just was taken to another event, a scene, I mean, I would say when, like, so excuse me for going back and forth, but I died at the age of 63. Um, but then I was revived five years later because I told them not to revive me for another five years for some reason that had significance. Like maybe I wanted to avoid something or I thought it was my time or, you know, sometimes when you know and you just want to get out of here already, it will just happen and you'll go because your soul just wants to leave already, you know, you don't want to be here anymore. So, um, but, but I didn't officially die until 83. So I'll get into that. But yeah, I, basically there was like an accident at the job site, like some piece of metal, like I didn't mean to enter a certain code a wrong way and it like freaked out on me and it just, oh, I don't mean to be graphic, but it just went <laughs> like, it just poked me. That's all I'll say. Like Steve Irwin, like, yeah, like it was not pretty. And it, it like multiple times, like here and here, like, yeah, it was not pretty. So, um, the machine freaked out. I thought I was like a hacker or something and it tried to attack me. So yeah. Uh, and then the workers came, there were two, I remember two tall men. Um, it's weird as I remember cause it's in the future, but this is the only time I'll agree with this because there's no time and space in the universe. Everything is in the now. So technically this is already happening now as we speak, but I still haven't physically experienced that experience. I hope I never do have to. I hope that soul fragment already will experience that timeline and not make me do it. Do you know what I'm saying? And have to relive it and forget my life here. You know what I'm saying? So it's really freaky, but it's kind of freaky weird because on another planet, technically it can already be the year 2050 there. Does that make sense? So maybe it'll already happen. Does that make sense? So yeah, you can't really see something that hasn't happened yet. Do you, do you get, you get me right? So yeah. Um, but basically, um, yeah, I was like, okay, so, and then th these two tall, like, really tall, um, average looking men, one with like blonde hair, one with brown hair, I think, I forgot their names, uh, I didn't write that part down, no, I did not, their names were like, I think one was Tom or Thomas, another was like, Bernadine or something, I don't remember, this point, but yeah, um, one had an odd otherworldly name like Layla for sure. Um, and basically, like, they were very friendly with me, but still professional. But like, they were so sad, like, when they saw me slipping away on the floor, like, after the machine, like, freaked out on me. Um, they were just watching me go, and then I quickly had to tell them. Like, basically, like, put me in the pod for another five years and then re resuscitate, you know? Like, don't do it now. I don't want to be here now. Like, I felt like I knew, like, my soul had another mission elsewhere, so I had to come back five years later. They resuscitated me, and then I continued living and working. Yes, working at 68 years old until I couldn't anymore. And then I officially died at 83 of just natural old age causes. I was literally sitting with family, and then, like, I just suddenly, like, killed over, like, just like that, in the chair, like, randomly, just old age, you know, like, just all of a sudden, and that's that, so, um, but I, I, I looked like, like a very pretty woman, like, I, I looked almost, like, foreign, but, like, like, a little plump in the cheeks, like, round, but, like, 
good figure and like just well put together and I was like that even through old age like honestly I didn't really look all that old up until last minute really so another event I was taken to was celebrating my birthday so they celebrate birthdays there and um, it's like a huge deal though like it's not like oh you know let's go out to Chili's no there it's like you gotta gather your family it's tradition all of them your cousins your niece your nephew everyone that's alive and you have to have this like gelatinous cake it looked like jello cake like a bundt cake that's like jello but it had like it was weird it was like other candies and life forms that were sweet that you could eat like it's almost like candy worms but not but they were actual life forms but you could eat them and they were good like they they were not like you know eating insects or something you know what i'm saying so um and they had nutrients like there was a different way of eating i had to inject the food it's like this pink thick paste and i had, there's like a, a, a pod here in my arm and then i have to like every day i come from work i put that in the pod and it i absorb it and it's my food without having to use my teeth to consume and i, I felt like something with um it avoided like having to do tough dental work and it was better to absorb it directly intravenously in a sense like it, it was strange but like that thick paste somehow converted into the bloodstream and made it food and you could have your nutrients for the day so you only needed to do it once a day in the afternoon was my appointed schedule time and i was satisfied i was healthy i, I you know i was active it made me energized you know it gave me everything i needed you know but we did eat it felt like we ate sometimes like only during like special events like birthdays you know so um that was interesting but it was still like jelly like a like a smush like you know it's not like actual food you know that's why it was like a gelatinous cake and we didn't eat much of it it was like maybe a couple two three four bites we didn't really attach ourselves to food so it felt like we were more high vibrational you know it definitely felt at least four dimension fourth dimension I, w I would say that sits in my spirit or like a really high part of the third dimension like i'm gonna go with fourth dimension that feels sits more right in my spirit because some when you're sitting here remembering it's like it comes back to you you know so i know this is like freaky weird but like there is so much more out there allegedly in the universe but this video's entertainment purposes only take it like a story time but when you know you know you just remember you recall it's like wow it actually it feels real you know um like when you're watching a movie like avatar if that part felt real to you it probably is i'm just saying i mean it wasn't made up out of thin air who made that up really they just made it up randomly are you effing kidding me like no obviously it came through them in regressions and they knew they know okay let's not play dumb i'm not even gonna argue with anyone celebrated with your family i loved my family oh my god i loved my family so much like like it almost made me cry like when i died like i felt bad that i like my soul looked down on my body i felt bad i died right there in front of my like <laughs> in front of like a grant that i didn't have children because i didn't have a partner but it was like niece from another side you know what i'm saying like i felt bad i was like all those poor kids they're gonna remember grandma just <laughs> so and i always knew i felt always more feminine like I, I must have another half of me like somewhere as a woman i just knew but i looked around my house it was like very plasticky like a clean plastic it was a material that you could you don't have to clean like it cleans itself like i, I would touch it I would touch my wall it'd be like this but plasticky and it would like whoosh, clean itself <laughs> without you knowing or seeing like it emits like a vapor that just but you don't see it, it it's just it, it i can't even imagine it like it's just like the clothing material i couldn't even my mind couldn't even process what i was seeing 
so, um, there was like one table that pulled out of the wall and you could like sit there and lay and it looked hard, but it, and it was hard, like a hard white plastic. I mean, you think of those bathrooms with the baby stalls, right? You pull them down and they're all hard plastic, but when you lay on it, it somehow is comfortable. It's still hard. It doesn't mold or change shape, but it's comfortable when you lay on it. So I had like a custom built one for me and my back. And I don't know, there's something with my back. I don't know what it is. Like, I must have scoliosis or something, but I don't know. There's something with my back. Um, so I lived in a plastic house. I lived alone. There was no partner. And I felt a little sad. I looked around. I, I was also a little depressed. So I, I think I took something extra for that. There was like a fibrous substance I took. And that, like my first impression was like depression. Like, like I had like an issue. Like I felt like I was working all the time. I didn't have a loving partner. Someone to like touch me, hug me, you know, make love to me. Like I felt sad, alone, you know. No children. Just like a desolate house. Like a plastic white boring house. Like, you know, like wasn't just white but like a lot of it was and it was so clean and like everything was so sterile that I just felt kind of depressed you know and we weren't allowed outside ever so you couldn't like if your skin touched outside I mean that's it for you it's over like spotless material that's what I wrote spotless material like you could spill something and it would just clean like it's almost like it absorbs it somehow and vaporizes it into nothing. Um, yeah, so, what else? Basically, after I perished, my future self told my current self to enjoy the present life more. Because this life won't last the way it is. I will have to go. And that's that. There's no question ifs or buts my soul knows when it's my time, and I just have to face the reality of all my future lives, but just truly remember to enjoy this moment now, then how amazing it is now. I can go outside. I don't have to, you know, let's say slave for a job I hate. I don't, you know, need a lover. Um, I don't just have to eat jelly and inject other jelly in my body. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, describing the pink squishy substance she put through her pod in her arm um that she used as food that was her food i don't have to do that you know like i don't have to take this fibrous substance for depression right like there's so much she tried to make me realize that like my life was so much better than i like i can even conceive so um like i guess the point was like her soul my soul was trying to make my soul understand that during the session, do you know what I'm saying? Like, really enjoy the present more. That was powerful. Like, that's all you need to do. You know, when you're worried about something, just enjoy it. And she didn't even have time to enjoy it. She was working all the time. And then before you know it, bam, you know. It goes fast. I felt cold and sterile during Layla's life. Overworked. That's why I came home like, oh, I would put like the bag down and I would be like sore in my back, tired. And that's it. It was just the same thing every day. It was also every day, seven, like whatever week was in their life, month, every day. We call it seven days a week. Every day I worked from a certain time to a certain time. I come home, do the same thing, inject the jelly, take the fiber, lay down, get up. I don't know. I didn't see much else. Like, did we even use the bathroom? I don't know. Okay? It went so fast. Um, overworked. That's all it was. And I feel like that's why it went so early. Like, you think of futuristic life. No. Like, it maybe had something to do with my back or just resuscitating after five years to be resurrected again through this pod machine and then like have to work again like that probably put a lot of pressure and I had a hard life like even though my life was handed to me it was
was easy. I didn't have to do anything else. I didn't have to, like, you know, struggle to get food or, you know, what, what's in the third dimension. But it was hard in other ways. It was hard on the soul. And I feel like those substances I was taking at the time were to help with that. But I've, it, it still didn't. It, it didn't make everything go away. The humanity part, because I still looked human, you know. Um, I felt human. I could resonate with human. Even looking at the men, I worked with the two men, human. Oh, now I'm remembering more. I had kind of like a crush or a little, little ounce of special connection with one, but he, he didn't want anything with me. And they were so like cold and sterile too, in a way that I almost want to cry. Like she had more of a human part of herself than they did. And that's why she suffered more, but she kept it to herself, because they can't know if you're feeling too much, then they might, like, put more of a certain thing in your jelly, do you know what I'm saying? So that you're, like, sterile and cold. So, yeah, um, she kind of suffered to herself. Liquids. So this is another part. Liquids we drank, like water was bubbly. So the bubbles slash water also had different nutrients you needed. It was more for energy boost though. Like if the food wasn't giving you enough energy, the smushed injectable food, then you would drink the bubbly liquid and it would replenish you in other aspects you were missing. And something with the blood, like it did something, nourish the blood or something like that. Um... Everyone traveled by pots, yeah. Lands of planet looked yellow and brown and desolate, so yeah, I basically said all of this, so. Um, not the nicest world to live in, unless you like working all the time, and you like everything, you're a control freak, and you like everything clean, like obsessively clean, you know? Then that's for you. And for vampires who don't like to go outside, I don't know, the land looked cool, but it was freaky. Like, it was freaky that I was inside, and I look outside the windows, which were, like, not windows as we have in our houses. They were just all, like, glass. Like, you could see the whole... There was no interruption of your view, basically. But it was curved glass, so, like, you know, I guess it would, like... It, oh, I feel like the curve was for the wind. Like, it was very windy, so it would, like, bounce off the walls, so it wouldn't make noise, rather than, like, a, a square wall would really rip through terms of wind and be kind of damaging to the uh, building architecture over time. Architecture, excuse me. I felt bad for her, for myself, you know, that, that like, that's me, you know, that's a part of me, and it's like, whoa, you know, we didn't have much time to, like, heal through whatever I was, like, experiencing, but I felt like, you know, why did she choose, that was the big mystery, why did she choose five years break? At least we had the choice to do that, to be revived, but still freakishly weird, and, um, yeah, I don't think they expected that decision, but because by the time I pa passed temporarily at 63, I was higher up in the workplace that they respected my decision to say, okay, we're gonna keep you in a pot for five years, and we'll, we'll bring you back, so, really weird, really strange, um, but I felt like I felt better away and that's all I remember so yeah that's Layla shout out respect to Layla girl you're doing great if you're out there somewhere in the universe at the same time as I'm living this existence know that your boo boo Tony your other half or other fractal one eighth one sixteenth is here they say we have 12 different fractals so maybe one twelfth is here um please remember maybe you do because you're in a future world but Keep going, you got this girl. And if you already lived your life, I hope you understood your soul assignment <laughs> for that life. You are loved. You are always loved and embraced. And shout out to you for embracing your humanity even through the cold darkness of such a sterile world with lack of feeling. <laughs> oh boy, you know what?
what's ironic, they sure felt human when they saw me start to wither away, right? Oh, yes. That brought their humanity. That's for sure. That's for sure. They were still a little cold, but you could see almost the tears in their eyes. Yeah. Funny how that works, right? In a weird way, funny how someone's death can even heal you. Does that make sense? Anyway, maybe you got something out of this. <laughs> I hope you enjoy this story time of my future life. <laughs> oh, and the planet was called, um, oh my gosh, what was the planet called? Osiris, something like that. It was like, it was not Osiris, Osiris, Osiris. It was not serious, no way. That's the first download I felt, Osiris, something like that. 